Okay, so the first thing I want to do, if I can get my home camera here to be where it needs to be, is I want to do a, an equation sheet, an equation sheet review for exam number three. And now we're back out of focus. There we go, okay? So on exam number three, um, you know, I told you all in class on Friday that the first thing I would do is make sure I actually understood the equations because you can't work the exam if you don't know the difference between what these equations are saying. And on exam number three, let's just step back and look, we are still dealing with normal stress. And that's where we have a force P that's acting through that longitudinal centroid. And as we um, apply either a tension or compression, we are going to have a change in length. So here's my original length. And if I pull on it, if I'm pulling in tension, then it may get longer, and that's my length final. And so I know that this change in length, this is my deformation, if I use that word, which is important when we use compatibility of deformation. Um, this could be my elongation or contraction, um, change in length. Okay, these are all saying the same thing. So I have a force P that's acting over a cross-sectional area. I have a force P that's acting over a cross-sectional area. I'm going to end up with a normal stress. If this is in kips and this is in inches squared, this is in KSI. Stress is always in units of pressure. Forces are always in units of kips and area are always in units of a, a length squared. Okay, so I've applied this force P over my area and I've had this deformation. Well, why does a rubber band stretch so much more than if I tried to stretch my pencil? Okay, that comes back down to the area property. So stress is a function of force and geometry. I don't care what the material is. This deformation becomes a force of, I mean, becomes, um, dependent on the material. So we have this relationship of stress equals E times strain. This little guy right here, that's strain. Strain is not delta. Strain is not deformation. Strain is the ratio of that change in length to my original length, or length final minus length initial over length initial. Okay, so the stress is that force that I'm applying to an area. That doesn't matter what material I'm using, but this strain, this change in length per unit length, does matter. E, modulus of elasticity. It is the area of our stress strain curve, okay, that is linearly elastic. We have our elastic region, if I could spell, and we have our plastic region. It's not elastic. As long as I'm in the elastic region, I can apply that P over A, release P over A, and this delta will always go back to a delta of zero. It will go back to its original shape. And while I'm in this elastic region, I can use PL over AE, okay? If I am not in the elastic region, if I have yielded, if I've gone past yielding, I have to use a stress strain curve, and I can find where I am on the stress because I have P over A and then I can come down and I can pull that actual value of strain off and it's gonna be much larger than the strain that I have in the elastic region. So this is only valid in the elastic region, okay? These are all deformation, change in length, every fiber is being stretched or contracted the same. These are all axial, axial might be a key word you hear, okay? Now let's look over here. Well, let's just wait. Let's go down here and look at material properties. So when I'm looking at material properties, I need to understand that my E value, that modulus of elasticity, that's the linear elastic region. That's the stress strain relationship in the elastic region, okay? That when I apply a stress, I will have a strain and it is linear in relationship to the stress in this region, okay? I will note the yield stress that I'm given, yield stress. 
Yield stress is that magical point where we go from the elastic region to the other part of our stress strain curve. This is going to be with axial. Change in temperature, we use this with axial. Okay? The other thing we've talked about is torsion. Okay, torque, twist, rotation. Okay, so over here we had change in length, deformation, elongation. Okay, they're all having to do with a length. These are all having to do with the rotation. So when I look at this, I could have a segment. It's attached to the wall or whatever, and I'm going to apply a torque. Okay, and a torque is just force times distance. When we're looking at gears, we could look at a force, and its distance is that radial length. So torque is just a, a fancy moment where we twist about our own centroid versus the moment that we get in a beam, okay, the moment where we cause bending. This is a fancy moment. It's just twisting about itself. I guess you could think of chubby checkers. I think he used to saying something about twist, okay? So when I look at when I look at shear stress, okay, shear stress with torque, okay, my shear stress is right here. It again, over here, normal stress, function of force and geometry, shear stress, force, torque, and geometry. So you have to remember when we look at this little cross section and I apply a torque to it. I have a radius, okay? And we're going to call rho is our radial length. When rho equals the radius, we've gone all the way to the out, we call that C, okay? So C is just the radius. It's the radial length. Rho is literally just some length along the radius, okay? J. J is also a function of geometry. If you have a hollow tube down here, and if you have a solid tube up here, so just like P over A is force and area, we could call it force and geometry, shear stress is force and geometry. And we're still going to get the same units of KSI, PSI, or Pascal. Okay? Now, unlike over here where each little fiber stretches the same, so each little fiber is experiencing the same stress, we could call it an average stretch, as average stress. When we look at shear stress due to torsion, okay, because it's now a function of this radial length, it's a linear relationship now. It's not constant, so average. It's a linear relationship. When I am at the center, I have zero, zero shear stress because rho is zero. As I move away from the center, then my shear stress is increasing, and it's increasing linearly as a function of rho, which is our radius. So we have a, a distribution of shear stress that's increasing to the outside edge. And if you think about it, if, if you're wringing out a towel or a washcloth, then for this piece to remain solid and each fiber attached together. As I rotate about that centroid, as I move farther away, each of these fibers is having to stretch farther, okay, it's having to stretch farther to make that twist, oops, sorry, it's having to stretch farther to make that twist occur. So clearly in the middle, there is no twist because we are twisting about ourselves. But as I move away, that shear value is bigger because my row is getting bigger. But if you just think about it fundamentally, as you're twisting, as you're twisting, these fibers out here are having to twist a whole lot farther than the fibers closer to the middle. Okay? Stress. Again, we have stress is a relationship to our deformation. We have a stress strain curve, which is shear. We have a shear strain. And we have this linear part, okay, yield. We have this linear part where the stress and the strain have this nice relationship. It's a linear relationship. It's a it's like a it's like a line function, okay? And G is that relationship. So I could twist um, a, a, a round pencil eraser, you know, like those long erasers. I could twist that and I could put a, a quantity of torque on there. I could also take my pencil and twist it, OK? 
Okay, I could apply the same torque to my pencil as I could to that 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 long skinny white eraser that goes in the clicky things. Okay, and the long white skinny eraser is going to twist a whole lot more than my pencil because they have different values of of g. This is my shear modulus of rigidity. So we have our modulus of elastic elasticity. We can think of rubber band. It's elastic. We can pull it. Okay, we have our shear modulus of rigidity. How rigid is this box before it starts to skew over? Because that's what we get with shear strain. If we have a box, okay, like this, and I have a shear force at top of that box, so it's like a brake pad that's pressing in on a wheel. If you held it up like this, there's my brake pad, there's my wheel going through. As I apply that shear force, because see, this is parallel to the area, that's perp perpendicular, then I'm going to have a skewing. I shouldn't have tried to draw this in 3D. But I'm going to have a shear strain. And that's that amount of skew that I get in this small little rectangle. So imagine if you put a small little rectangle on the outside of this shaft. And I, as I went to spin it, as I went to turn it, you're going to see, you're going to have some deformation that is, is like a skewing. Gamma, that's our shear strain. It's that rotation. Torsion causes shear strain because I'm skewing this rectangle on top, those fibers. That, that rectangle is going to want to like have a deformation from straight to like skewed. Okay, so this is shear strain. This is coming from sheer stress, okay? Pulling on it is axial. It changes the length, okay? So you have to remember normal is always perpendicular to the cross section. What is going on with this, okay? Normal is always, go way back to statics. When we would cut a beam in statics, we would assume there was a normal force, a shear force, a bending moment, and now we're finding there's torque, okay? Shear force is parallel to the surface. Normal is perpendicular. This is way, way, way back in statics, okay? And if you're super strong with this, it's pretty easy to just transfer this information goes with normal. This information goes with torque, okay? So when I look at phi, Phi is literally the rotation that um, we have the torque we're applying and we have the geometry, okay? It's a function of G, the material. The more rubbery that I have of material, the more twist I'm going to get. The more rigid it is, the less twist I'm going to get. But this equation, once again, is only valid in the elastic region. It's only valid in the elastic region. So I have to check and always keep making sure that my shear stresses that I'm finding are in that elastic region. If it's not in the elastic region, I cannot use this equation, okay? So we have twist, straight. With torque comes power. And really this is just uh, conversions, okay? But torque, if you think, you know, if you are a mechanical person and you love cars or motorcycles or boats, then you're, you've got power, like I've got so many horsepower. Well, that horsepower is providing angular rotation to a shaft, it's, and, and it's putting torque in there, okay? And we've talked about how gears, we have gear reduction, so that we can change the torque as we're working through a system, okay? This equation right here is for a circular cross-section, whether it's solid or hollow, okay? This is for torsion and thin walled tubes, okay? So those are like the tubes, they can be irregular shape. We usually just look at like squares, it's easier. Sorry, my dog's barking, okay? So I have the applied torque. Area mean, that's where I find the center line of my cross section, here's my center line, okay? The area mean is the area within that center line. So it's not the outer okay, area, it's not the inside area, but literally it's the center line, it's the mean area. That means average, okay? T is the thickness. If I look here, torque in my system, length, area mean, 
Okay, again, that's the area bounded by that average line, the center line. G is a material S. Okay, this looks scary. It's not. T is thickness. Find your smallest thickness. S is S. If you think of S as like position um, or distance in dynamics, if you've had dynamics, S is just literally the length of that inner line. That's all it is. So you don't have to look at how fancy that is, but just call it the perimeter over thickness. Okay? And then you have these other irregular shapes. Sorry, I don't know what's going on out there. I need to go see. But we have these other irregular shapes. A square, a triangle, and an ellipse. A. A is defined. A is defined. Okay? Ellipse. T, that's just your torque. Torque, length, A, defined, G. So it's just a matter of finding the right equation and understanding what your variables are. So when I'm looking then at shear stress and I'm looking at torsion and shear modulus, then I need to recognize G, 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 and shear, shear are related. Okay, these are the ones related. Shear stress equals G times gamma. Shear strain. Just like normal stress equals E times normal strain. Okay, so take some time to figure out what do these equations mean. Because on the final, we're going to have double this again. We're going to have four different stresses that we're looking at. And if you can't get these organized in your head, it just it's just going to make it a little bit tougher. Okay? So, work on this.